a whopping 54% of likely voters in Anambra's gubernatorial election, says they're not voting in the November 6th governorship elections due to insecurity. And that's according to a survey carried out by consulting firms SBM Intelligence. A further 26% in Anambra State says they will not vote due to a loss of faith in the election process. Joining me to discuss this further is Confidence Isaiah Makhari. He is a geopolitical analyst at SBM Intelligence. is live to us from our headquarters, Lagos Studios. Good morning. Great to have you. And I'm just reading through some of these questions and I'm getting a bit of a mixed feeling. But I'm going to allow you to speak to this because your survey disclosed that economic development came in a third place in terms of the priorities for the Anambrarians in terms of uh, behind insecurity and, and, and the talk about uh, Biafra. What is the implication of this? Were you surprised at this particular uh, survey result? No, no, actually not, because uh, human needs, uh, security comes you know, top of it. Without a secure environment, it can't do business. So people need to feel secure before they can be able to open their shops or go to work. And so you could see it reflective in the polls, as in the questions as we surveyed about 663 people, and you saw the total number of people that said they are not going to vote, citing security concerns and all of that. So on the long run, people need to feel secure before they are able to go to the market or even say they want to, to go out to, to vote. So you can see it reflective in the results. This is quite disturbing. Is it disturbing to you? Yeah, the very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. Because Anambra is, is an economically productive state. It's one of the most economic, uh, economic important I states. In the I live there for close to two years. Exactly. I live and work there, uh, so, and, I, so, and so I know. Yes, so it's, it's, its main market, Onisha markets, is just like the crossover between the southeast and the south. south. So a lot of economic activity is going on there. So you could see how much, uh, how much, of, um, how much grounding of businesses that have taken place over the past few months because of the heightened insecurity there. And so it could... In a manner of speaking, we're talking about fear. Yes. On a daily basis for Anambrarians. Absolutely. I, I mean, you could see so this... That's what the poll reflects. Yeah. General fear of life and property. IPOB, communal clashes, and so, so many other things. Sometimes state sanctioned violence in places mm. like uh, Idemili South, I am a loom, Oka, and so, 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 so many other places. It's not as, as if the violence is concentrated in one particular part of the state. It encompasses the entire state. And so you could see from the response that most pe uh, people that we sampled across the three senatorial zones, the response is basically the same. 54% is an overwhelming figure. People just do not feel the need to go and vote because the states cannot guarantee their security. And one of the, one of the functions of a state is to protect the lives and properties of the people. And so if the Nigerian state has failed to do that, it simply cannot expect people to leave the comfort of their homes to go and exercise their constitutional rights. Do you think this, uh, the Southeast, uh, uh, the state of insecurity, as this survey, your survey has revealed, has, uh, has dented uh, with the attractiveness of our number of states as an investor's destination? In, in the survey we, co uh, we conducted about two or three months ago, um, respondents, about 70% of them said uh, their businesses have been grounded. And so uh, the, there is a huge loss of potential. There's a huge lo loss of business interest, investment, and so many other things. And of course, you could attribute it to the sit at home order that has been implemented in, uh, in, uh, by, by the ind indigenous peoples of Biafra. And one thing to note is that it's not so much as saying IPOB should give it a break or talking to the leaders of IPOP. The important thing here to see is that the group's command and control structure has broken down terribly. And so you could tell the leader of IPOP, call off your guys. And then some other people there are doing a different thing. You saw the same thing in Afghanistan, where somebody would say grouse against the state, go outside to commit a crime, and then calls himself a Taliban. Mm -hmm. And so that command and control structure is broken. So it will take a very, very long time to fix and get investors' confidence back into the state. Well, we're dealing with a very serious problem here in which the, the confidence of the people and the ordinary man in an amber state, in, both in the state and yes. the federal level, becomes so broken down that they fear that stepping out of their homes on an election day is a very serious insecurity, a threat to their life and, and, and property. Absolutely. And, and, and that is, so from the perspective of an average an amber voter, uh, dealing with unemployment, inflation, few jobs, their insecurity, 
Uh, is there any silver lining? Because as you rightly said, when you leave southwest and you go into the southeast, Anambra is like, is like what Lagos is. Yeah. Anambra is to southeast what Lagos is to the southwest in the manner of speaking. Yeah. Well, that's contestable if you take a, <laughs> a bar, by the way. So, yeah. but, but again, if, if you talk in terms of location, Anambra has got the river. So it's got seaport, it's got oil and, and a few other. So it's a very strategic economic uh, destination and point on Nigeria's geography. But here we are. Do you see any silver lining? Do you, how do you think we can resolve this? The, 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 the first thing to notice is that the candidates have sort of promised economic growth. Uh, we have one particular candidate from the APC talking about aligning the states with the center. That's, you know, a federal, um, a federal government led by the APC and then a state government led by the APC. Is there any of the candidate who will not promise economic growth? Yeah, economic growth? yeah, of course. Everybody of course. will promise So, so that, is, that is the point I'm trying to make. Every one of them are promising economic growth. Yes. So the voters in some Did way... Did anybody aspired, promise security? Well, they do. They do understand that uh, part of their their mandate is they do not control. The they understand the problem. Agencies. They do understand the problem. They understand the problem. They do understand. But the, the solution. But but the solution is what they are not they are not so certain about. On one hand, you you have a, a, a subset of the political elite who favour diplomacy and dialogue with the separatists. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have another set of the elites who prefer the federal government to do the job. And so the voters are spoiled for choice. You have. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, uh, a professor of uh, economics, if, a former CBN governor, mm -hmm. who is promising investment. On the other hand, you have the PDP candidate who, of course, cut his then, teeth. Then you have, you have many others And then you well. have several uh, others, several others who are them. contested. And so, yes. so, so the voters mm -hmm. are spoiled for choice. They, they know what they want, for, and then they actually decide to go for the people who actually decide to vote. They actually know what they want to go for. <sighs> November the 9th. Thank you so much, Confidence. Absolutely. Uh, Harry from uh, SBM Intelligence. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for Bring having me.